this video, we're going to talk about the role of risk in investing. We'll look at how risk is used to power your financial growth strategy. Any journey requires speed. We need to ascertain what is acceptable and what isn't, so we need to talk about it. We can't invest your money without some degree of risk. Most people won't have that conversation with you. We know it's vital, so we will. But what is risk? It's not a number on a scale. For instance, is 600 miles an hour risky? It is in a car, but not in a plane. Imagine a transatlantic voyage. You go as fast as you can when it is safe to do so, because speed helps you get to where you want to go. Without speed, you're not gonna go anywhere. And when you reach the end of your journey, you're going slowly to ensure a safe arrival. If you like, you need to be in cash as you arrive at your financial destination. But cash can't give you enough speed to get you across the Atlantic. The purpose of risk is to help your funds grow. It is unlikely that your funds can grow without it. What has the lowest risk for your money? Most people say banks or property. But is a bank without risk? You might say, well, yes, because they're guaranteed. But the very fact that bank guarantees exist means they can go bust. And also, normally, the guarantee doesn't extend to all investment. Property is no better. Can the value of your property go down? Yes, of course it can. So it is risky, isn't it? It's also not easy to sell property quickly. It's clearly not a liquid asset. So there isn't anything you can invest in without any risk at all. Has there ever been? No, there hasn't. People use controlled risk investments, and we might use them too, but you need to understand how they fit in to your financial plan. If you try to control the risk on your investment, then investment growth is also controlled. Clearly, the more flexibility you allow, the higher the growth can be. In fact, if you take inflation into account, you might not get anywhere if you limit your risk too much. If your money grows at 5%, which is roughly the best performance you are likely to get from a controlled risk investment, and inflation is 5%, you're basically making no headway. You need more speed. And that's how risk makes your money grow. When we are at the beginning of a journey, you need to get up to speed as quickly as possible. Over a 10 year investment, half the final value will come from the money invested in the first two years. And risk isn't the same as gambling. Gambling hinges on a split second event that you cannot research and the outcome is black and white. You either win or you don't. Investment success is determined by the market rather than by a split-second event. And your investment doesn't vanish. We use our judgment based on research to invest your money. If you buy shares in a company, you've bought a chunk of a living, breathing thing. A company is a premises. It includes people, products and infrastructure. It can't vanish in a split second. Let's look at how this works. Take Microsoft. It's a business oriented company. Microsoft software is sold inside other people's products to repeat business customers. Every day, millions of people buy products with Microsoft software in them. It has a steady, reliable cash flow, which means its share price is stable. It's on the up as a company. Apple does similar things, but has a different business model. It sells the software combined with its own hardware. It's design-led and innovative. It relies on loyal fans and is consumer-orientated. So it is reliant on the latest technology and design. That's perception-driven. It relies on signature launches of new products each year sold directly to consumers. If it gets the product wrong, or the marketing wrong, it's in trouble. Plus, its main sales come in a six-week period. So, its cash flow is erratic, which is reflected in its share price. One is a slow burner with great potential. 
The other is volatile, but still with great potential. Where do you put your money? If you chose Microsoft, no. If you chose Apple, no. If you chose both, yes. Of course, you're absolutely right. You invest in both. You have all the peaks of Apple and the troughs are evened out by the stability of Microsoft. But you don't want all your eggs in one basket. So we put them into different ones. That's common sense, isn't it? And that's what risk management is. But that's not really how we manage client money at all. We would be relying on a fund manager of a good tech fund to be doing that job for us on a daily basis with Microsoft and Apple as part of a portfolio of 150 to 200 other tech companies and we buy a part of that fund. Our job is to find good tech funds or two good tech funds that are complementary to each other. Our job is also to find other areas of investment that are likely to make money and complement each other. We have around 70 investment funds that are part of the investment vehicles we look after on behalf of clients. Each fund has a fund manager who looks after it on a daily basis. Our job is to monitor the fund selection on a monthly or quarterly basis to make sure we're buying the right investments for the long term. So if each fund includes on average 50 investments, on 70 funds we're looking at around 3,500 different investments being managed. That's how you manage money on a bigger scale. And that's how we make sure you get the most out of your investments. With all this in mind, how do you feel about risk and reward now? It's all about speed. You slow down when you have to, of course you do but otherwise you want to go as fast as possible. Your next job is to think about what we discussed here so that when we talk, we can answer any queries you have about using risk and reward.